Last weekend, Bill Crystal and Christina Vanden Heuvel exploded at each other during a panel discussion about Iraq. This was on the Sunday talk shows. Well, Crystal went on Newsmax TV, where he's going to discuss that debate that he had with Steve Malsberg, and listen to what Crystal's perception is of non-interventionists. This is comical. People can be God knows they can be against the Iraq war, they can be against doing war in Iraq right now. What's striking is liberals want, and there are liberals who have that view, but there are liberals who have that view with a sense of the tragic side of it, which is that, you know, a lot of people can get killed over there. Maybe we would only make it worse. Maybe we're not capable of making it better. Maybe we should just stay out. That's a, a sober judgment people can make. She is utterly cavalier about that. You know, it's as if 160,000, I mean, didn't liberals used to care about their fellow human beings? 160,000 Syrians killed, what's happening in Iraq today? Shouldn't liberals at least say, you know what, I really wish we could do something, but I don't think we can. She, what's striking to me about her, and I think this is emblematic of a certain stripe of liberalism, they don't even care, and they don't even pretend to care anymore. It's like the crassest kind of uh, selfish isolationism that people used to denounce the American right for. Yeah, no, that's interesting. And no, it's not interesting. It's really, really stupid. Did you hear what he said? He, oh, well, these liberals, they don't even pretend to care about human beings anymore. Didn't libs used to care about human beings? I mean, what happened? These isolationists, I mean, these guys are the problem. Okay, explain to me how, and by the way, there's a grand total of negative eight people in the country who are isolationists. There are a lot of non-interventionists. And that's what he's, those are the people he's really referring to that he's smearing as isolationists. But Bill, go ahead and tell me how they are the people who don't care about human beings again. Please explain that to me. Please explain to me how it's the neoconservatives and the interventionists who care about human beings. No, you have to understand something. This is an empirical question. Like, we can actually do this thing called data analysis where we look at the numbers and the deaths that occur under these different ideologies when they're implemented, okay? And what happened with the war in Iraq, for example? We ended up killing well over 100,000 civilians, and I'm using the most ultra-conservative number there when I say that. We displaced millions of Iraqis, okay? And never mind the fact that, you know, over 4,000 of our own soldiers died. Never mind adding up the casualties in Afghanistan or the casualties in Yemen and Somalia and Pakistan and all the areas where we're doing the illegal drone war where we kill 98% of the victims are not top Al-Qaeda operatives. Okay, how are you going to sit there and say that it's the non-interventionists that don't care about people when if we implemented the non-interventionist ideology and we stayed out of Iraq and Afghanistan, there would be, you know, well over 100,000 more people alive today and their lives wouldn't have been ruined. Yes, yeah, Saddam Hussein was a bad guy. But in a world that's not perfect, you have to pick the lesser of two evils, especially when it comes to overseas dictatorships in volatile regions of the world. Yes, yeah, Saddam Hussein was a douchebag, but less people would have died if he stayed in power. For fuck's sake, he actually brought stability to the region. What happened now that he's gone? There's a weak Maliki government in there, and ISIS is moving in, and we're seeing the reemergence of the Shiite-Sunni civil war, never mind the Kurds in the north fighting both of them. I mean... How can you say that interventionism has worked and interventionism is more kind? How about Vietnam? I mean, in Vietnam, we killed about 500,000 civilians. For what? Because we were afraid that if communism happened in Vietnam, that in the blink of an eye, it would be in Nebraska? But that's just wrong. That's just not true. Vietnam didn't have the capability to come to the United States of America and fight us here. That's insane. That's revisionist history. It, look, if you look at the history of the United States of America post-World War II, the majority of the times that we intervened, we made something worse. Okay? And we didn't have to do it. That doesn't mean that every time it was wrong. There's a good argument, obviously, for World War II. There's a good argument, obviously, to get involved. You know, Bosnia and Kosovo is used as a good example of when intervention actually worked and it prevented a genocide. There was an argument that maybe we could have or should have gotten involved in Rwanda and prevented the genocide there. But the overwhelming majority of the times we got involved in something, it was a bad idea and we fuck shit up. 
We toppled, in 1953, we toppled the democratically elected government of Iran with Mohammad Mossadegh as the leader and put in the Shah, who's a dictator that would serve us. We toppled the democratic government of Chile and put in a dictator there. We've supported dictators all around the world in Myanmar and Burma. That's just another example. I mean, the list goes on and on. How many South American governments did we topple? We funded, uh, you know, military juntas. I mean, we're allies with dictators today. The idea that us mingling in everybody's affairs is a net win for people, are you fucking kidding me? If we had not gotten involved in most places, way more people would be alive today. And that's not just speculation, that's a simple matter of looking at the numbers. Okay, and I haven't even brought up the fact that because of the war on terror, because we broke Iraq and Afghanistan, we have increased terrorism in the region. Why? Because it turns out when you kill so many civilians, when you get somebody's aunt and uncle or brother or sister or friend, when you kill them, people who were otherwise moderate and didn't really care about America, didn't have an opinion, or they were on the fence, or they were like, whatever, then those people become radicalized and they go, you know what? Fuck it, give me an AK-47, I'm gonna end up fighting these people. So we're creating more terrorists by doing that. We're also arming uh, terrorists in the region. I mean, it was Ronald Reagan who gave weapons to the Mujahideen. And they ended up breaking up into the Taliban and Al-Qaeda later on. So tell me again how interventionism helped when we literally armed jihadists? How did that help? How did that help? And then this idiot's even saying, well, we should have gotten involved in Syria. But wait, 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 now you want to get involved in Iraq, right? So you do realize that if we get involved in Iraq, we would fight the people who you wanted to be allies with in Syria. Because when Bill Crystal wanted to get involved in Syria, he wanted to fight Assad. He didn't want to fight ISIS, he wanted to fight Assad. So you want to fight Assad in Syria alongside ISIS, but at the same time fight ISIS in Iraq. And fight alongside Iran. But then also you want to in intervene in Iran too and fight the excuse me, fight there. And you want to intervene in Ukraine too and fight Russia, who we would also be fighting side by side with against ISIS. This is the absurdity and the massive joke that is interventionism, that is neoconservatism.